I now recognize Mr. Moskowitz from Florida for five minutes of questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the committee uh, for letting me uh, wave on. In a previous life, before I got here, I was the Director of Emergency Management for the state of Florida and handled the first 18 months of the COVID response for uh, Governor DeSantis. And I worked with both administrations. <clears throat> I worked with the Trump administration all the way until he lost the election, and then I worked with the Biden administration in the rollout of the vaccine. I can tell you what both administrations did extremely well. I can tell you what both administrations did extremely poorly. But what, what I can't for the life of me understand is that every time we talk about COVID, we talk like it started on Joe Biden's inauguration day, like COVID started on January 15th. M Mr. Schwartzman, just to remind everybody who's watching, who was president when COVID came from China and infiltrated the country? President Trump. Okay. And so I know we forget that when we ask the questions about what government did and government's response and was it proper. There were two administrations that had a response. And so let's, let's dive into that. You know, do we forget that the Trump administration was so unprepared for the pandemic that they literally had to change the expiration dates on PPE, masks, gowns, gloves, things that had expired, that they told doctors and nurses, oh yeah, yeah, don't worry about the expiration date. We, we'll, have the, we'll have the CDC just change, the FDA just change the expiration date. In, in fact, we had to turn to the country, China, that allowed the virus to come here for almost all our supplies. So the country, that allowed the virus to come here, that killed over a million Americans, we had to turn to them for our entire response. It's probably why Trump said, I don't know, things like China's been working very hard to contain the coronavirus. The United States greatly appreciates their efforts and transparency. It will all work out well, in particular, and on behalf of the American people, I would like to thank President Xi. By the way, I'll only do that once, because I did this in a previous committee. He, he does that for like a whole month, like 20 times. You know, I, I want to I, I bring up something else, because I, I found it an interesting conversation. We have a First Amendment in this country, which is what we can do. But I want to ask Mr. Bailey a question of what we should do. Mr. Bailey, we can, we can debate things in this country, but I want to ask a should question, and I'm going to use an extreme example, okay? So I'm not, this is, I'm, not, I'm not trying to set you up. Do you think we should debate whether the Holocaust happened in this country? I know we can debate it. Do you think we should debate it? I think we should fight to protect core political speech in this nation, even disfavored speech, and the best remedy is counter speech, not government censorship. So, so you agree with me that we can debate it. I agree we can. I'm not disagreeing. Do you think we should? Do you think we should debate whether the Holocaust happened, whether 6 million Jews were killed, 10 million people? Do you think we should debate whether Hitler was a bad guy? Should we debate that? That is not an issue in the lawsuit that we filed that I'm here to talk about, and I'll stand by my answer. Okay. Uh, my point, and I understand why you didn't want to answer, because I know your answer. No, we shouldn't debate it. You don't want to say that because it shows that there's a distinction between whether we can debate things under our rights versus whether we should debate them, because should debating them could cause a lot of harm. And that's what happened in COVID. We can debate things in this country, but there was a whether we should debate them and whether the should would cause tremendous harm. I want to turn to something else. Donald Trump said this, my administration is recommending that all Americans, including the young and healthy, work to engage in schooling at home, avoid gatherings in groups of 10 or more, avoid discretionary travel, avoid eating and drinking at bars and restaurants and public food courts. That was his slow the spread recommendations, no more than groups of 10. He extended those recommendations to April 30th. Well, you know what came before that? Easter. It was Donald Trump who recommended to all of the governors in this country to not be open for Easter because you couldn't gather in groups of 10 or more. So the first one to close the churches to affect religion was not Joe Biden. It was Donald Trump when he recommended to the governors to not allow people to gather in places of 10 or more. And so what I don't understand is we should be talking 
about how this stuff never happens again. I agree with you. There are things that happen that should never happen again. But the way we make sure they don't happen again is by preparing, is by fixing the supply chain issues, but by making sure we're ready to face the next pandemic. We should be doing that on a bipartisan basis rather than just continuing to be aggrieved. I yield back.